fourth meeting of the Colorado Board of Appeals. My name is Paul Chansky, Chairman. This is a public proceeding, and unless we specifically vote to go into executive session and ask everyone to leave, we have the right to hear everything that's being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are up. We'll work from a prepared agenda tonight, and I'd like to read that right now. First is call to order, then attendance, then our public hearing to consider the administrative appeal as requested by Du Bois Livestock and Rangers Trust. Then we'll approve minutes of our August 30th training meeting. Any other business or new business, and finally adjourn. For each case we hear, the applicant is asked to proceed first and then be available to answer questions from the board. After the applicant has spoken, all other interested parties may make presentations and then also be questioned by the board. After all interested parties have spoken, each side will be given an opportunity for brief rebuttal. And once the public comment session is closed, we will deliberate and make a decision. The meeting is being recorded. It may be difficult to hear what is being said when multiple people speak at the same time, so please refrain from interrupting others. If you, has, if you have questions, please address them to me. We ask that each person offering testimony begin by giving his or her name and address. <coughs> In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinance or ordinances, our board acts by majority vote. A tie vote is insufficient to grant an administrative appeal or a variance. Following a decision on an application or appeal, toward the end of the meeting or at a subsequent meeting, we will prepare a written decision indicating findings of fact and conclusions of law, and that will be mailed to the applicant within seven days of our vote. The applicant is free to stay during this written decision process but this is not required. If anyone wishes to appeal our decision, you must do so to Superior Court within 45 days. Are there any questions about this process? Okay, I'd like to introduce members of the board and town officials who are present. I'll make this easy. David, this is David Berg. <laughs> Steve D.L., John Bell, Ray Reimer, and on my right is our attorney representing the board, Sally Daggett. Okay. Our secretary, Wendy Lang, Lang, and Mr. Nagel, our code enforcement officer, is uh, over to my left. Dave is an alternate board member, but is serving as a voting member tonight. With that, we can uh, proceed to attendance. Do you have that? Uh, yeah, I've taken attendance. All so set, Wendy? I think we're all set. Thank you. Okay, and uh, move on to the hearing uh, representing the appellants. Saul Fetter. Um, I live at 135 Senate Road in Arundel. I'm also uh, a, uh, an officer and a, uh, a director of Du Bois Livestock. And I'm going to be the one doing most of the talking tonight, I guess. Okay, uh, I'd like to start with uh, the issue involving the, uh, the, the appeal that was taken, I believe, in in 2013 and installed in 2014 that keeps coming up and keeps being treated as some sort of a resolve for all of the all of the issues and problems that we seem to have with the uh, with the with the ordinance that uh, that comes into question land use ordinances okay. in 2012 we were involved in about a half a dozen lawsuits, okay, which expanded into 10 or 11 lawsuits, I believe, as, as we progressed along. One of those matters went on, on to appeal, and it dealt with the preemption issue of whether or not the uh, main, uh, main uh, 
pardon me one second, Agricultural Protection Act, which they call MAPA, okay, uh, preempted the, uh, the town ordinances. We, we appealed it to the, to the Supreme Judicial Court, and it was determined that, of course, okay, preemption, okay, was not something that the, that MAPA actually did. Okay. And the statement that was made by the court says, that I want to bring to the attention of this board is, although the act prohibits a municipality from determining that a farm's method of operation violates a local ordinance, if the farm has used best management practices, there's no indication that in enacting the Agricultural Protection Act, the legislature intended to preempt any ordinance. So the decision of preemption, which is not an issue we're raising today, because it was already decided against us, okay, is, you know, is a dead issue. However, that wasn't the only thing, unfortunately, that came out of that particular appeal. The uh, Supreme Judicial Court made a determination that because composting was not defined as agriculture, and because it was not raised in Section 154, which was the particular section I mentioned here that, that bars local ordinances okay, from, from affecting a, a farm operation, okay, that, that ended up you know, creating a circumstance where the, uh, the composting that we were doing on, on the farm was no longer protected okay, under, the, under MAPA. Well, what happened after that was the Department of Agriculture sort of went crazy and, and, and we went to the legislature okay, along with that based on this very case, okay, this very appeal. And over the next probably year, okay, there was a change in the an amendment in the in MAPA that created you know a circumstance where they put in compost and manure as agricultural products, and they included agricultural composting in the in the uh, determination that uh, are under the protection okay afforded you know from ordinances you know. By municipalities, which included Arundel. Okay, from that standpoint, okay, we went into a mediation with Arundel in about 2016. Okay, we knew that you know, based on the new amendments, okay, we did not have to follow any of the of the ordinances because we were following best management practices to qualify as a farm. Okay. We went in and negotiated a particular deal. In this uh, in this uh, mediation, that was you know eventually reduced to a consent decree. Okay, the the, the provision that we are, are really interested in at, at this point is it states section one b and it provides in relevant part the limited performance criteria for the issuance and reissuance of all renewal permits here and after shall be deemed to have been satisfied by submissions described below or deemed inapplicable as a result of the boy's grandfather's status. Okay. There was an alternative there. Okay. The one thing that we wanted to make sure of was that when we came back and came out of this mediation, we did not have to deal with the planning board in a circumstance where they could deny our permit. We had enough, you know, uh, belief in the statute that they did not have the opportunity or the ability, okay, to actually enforce one of their land use ordinance statutes against us. So we put this particular provision in there, which is an alternative provision, okay, where the the, uh, the planning board could either, okay, deem our the, the land use ordinance is satisfied, or they could deem inapplicable, okay, the same ordinances. We don't know why, okay, every time we, we, we go through this, we have somebody who refuses to read the or in this particular provision. We would not, okay, have, have settled for any other option. Okay. There's no question about it. it you know, they, if you cannot take the sentence, which is unambiguous, okay, and, and turn around and create a circumstance 
where we would have had to comply with one thing, okay, completely, and to ignore our other option of being deemed inapplicable under our grandfather statute. Now, I don't know why, you know, we went through all of this particular, uh, you know, let me, let me rephrase. We went into this mediation knowing that we were ready to go clearly end with the town of Arundel. Okay. We did not believe for one instant that we were going to settle this case. And we got in there and we took every issue we had, not just the ones that dealt with the boys' livestock, okay, but we had personal you know, complaints that were filed against the town okay, by myself, by Marcel, okay, matters that involved all of the guys here. Okay. And we managed to group this all together and get rid of it. The one thing that we wanted and were sure to get, okay, was no more involvement by the planning board. And that option that was set out in that particular phrase did that. Now, it doesn't mean we get to walk away scot-free. We have the Department of Environmental Protection, you know, the Department of Agriculture, okay, who, who control what we do. We are licensed by the Department of Environmental Protection. When they don't like something, it doesn't matter what it is, okay, they come in, okay, they, they, they'll search the place, they do all sorts of other things. The problem is, we wanted to eliminate, okay, any jeopardy we would have had with the town. Unfortunately, the circumstance that we're in, they choose to read, okay, and disobey the consent decree by denying our permit that we applied for, and that's pretty much our story. Thank you. Fellow board members, have any questions? Uh, I, I've got a question. If you were so intent on not having to deal with the planning board, why did you agree in the consent degree, degree uh, to obtain a letter from the Arundel Code Enforcement Officer confirming the composting operation is in compliance with all applicable state licenses and regulations. You made it very clear you didn't want to deal with the town, and yet it's written right into the consent decree that you've got to. Okay. The town insisted that they really wanted the permit, okay? And we knew that the statute, okay, wouldn't let them come in and deny that permit. But in order, okay, to meet a compromise here, it, we set it up so that okay, there would be no jeopardy to our composting facility, okay, because they couldn't deny our permit, okay, but they could go through and if there were, and, and if we did not get a letter from the, the town uh, CEO, okay, we could be told, look, we're going to hold this in abeyance until you guys go over there and you manage to get a letter from him. So we would, of course, go through that process of getting that letter. Okay? Understand something. It may take us, you know, we may have to file an ADB or an ADC to, to get something like that done. The only difference is, okay, we're not, you know, in jeopardy of not being able to compost. Now, the whole other issue is, in, in, in involving the, 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 the other part is, is, is the map. We think the map was fine. If they want to whine about the map, we can turn around and take them into a, a, an ADC or an ADB and, and resolve that issue. The whole thing about it is, is while this is going on, okay, we are, there's no jeopardy as far as us okay, composting and, and working. That's the reason it was there. They chose that said they, they were hell-bent on a permit, and we said you can have a permit if it doesn't put us in this position where it's denied. So in other words, you're saying you can have a permit as long as you can do what you want, and nobody in the town has any objection to it. Well, no, that's not what it says, okay? There's also, you know, uh, you know I, I... No, that's what you're saying. That's no, what it I'm like saying also, there's saying. another option, okay? Yeah. If this wasn't going to go through, this wasn't going to work, the other option, okay, was to... To, to deem our permit under the other, other option. Nobody ever looks at the other option. There's two options, sir. And that, that sentence does not end with one option. And how anybody can read it without reading both, both uh, you know, alternatives. Okay. Now, understand something. It doesn't matter if you like it, because they don't. 
Okay, and it doesn't matter, you know, if you wanted it to be that way. Okay, that was what we agreed on. That is exactly what it says, and that is exactly what the board is supposed to, you know, make a determination on. You can't just ignore it. Okay, now understand, they are ignoring it. Okay, which is a disobedience of the, of the consent decree. Okay, can, can, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, it's a pretty simple one, really. Do you, do you feel uh, that you should be allowed to operate irregardless of failure to comply with the applicable state licenses and regulations? Pardon me? Well, okay, I'll rephrase that. Um, the subsection 2, paragraph B, uh, says that you should obtain a letter from the Randall Code Enforcement Officer confirming that the composting operation is in compliance with all existing and applicable state licenses and regulations. It doesn't yeah. mention the town, it's the state. Yeah. Um, and in that respect, as I read that, I may be wrong, but as I read that, the CEO is acting in effect as not an agent of the state, but a uh, a, a referrer of the state. No, he's not. He acts independently. You can't have that. That is not a, that is not. Well, it says if he's if he's got confirmed that the thing is in compliance, he's taking the information from the state and referring it to the planning board. No, board. no. He I can't he see is, how you no. I understand something. Okay, uh, the confer confirmation of a license. Okay, is one thing. Okay, telling us that we, I can't give you the letter, guys, because I, I think that you're not in compliance with something, okay, a, a state law. We have not been found not in compliance with, with it. Our license is good. We have, we are, 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 of course, as you can probably guess, we are litigating, you know, not in court, but we're, we're, we're negotiating with the, the, the uh, DEP, okay, like we have for years. The idea is our license is in, is in, is in, in proper order, our composting is in proper order, and yeah, if we have a problem with the state, we have to deal with the state, okay? and it's the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Environmental Protection. Well, while you're negotiating with the state, you're obviously not in compliance with all of the state licenses and regulations. No, that does not mean that you know, when you're negotiating with the state that you're not doing what, what, what are you negotiating well, excuse for? Excuse me, then? okay, and that's, and that's exactly the reason we wanted the planning board out of it. Because they take everything that they read, okay, and they treat it as though there has been a conviction. There has not been anything, uh, uh, that, you, know, you know, that affects our license. The problem is, okay, keeping the planning board out of it was essential. For this very reason, they don't understand what's going on with the Department of Environmental Protection or the Department of Agriculture. Okay. And it's not their job or duty to do it. And as far as municipal ordinances, the ordinances that they would be enforcing don't apply to the agricultural composting operation. Can, can you confirm to us that you are, as of this instant, fully in compliance with all state licenses and regulations. Oh yeah, we are. Through um, the chair. Yeah. I may. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's all I I'm new to this uh, piece of paper, the consent agreements. First time I've seen this when I get the packet. But only you zeroed in only two areas, so so have I tried to read those several times. Aside from all the showmanship. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk facts for a moment if we can. Okay. The town received in one of our documents, we saw a copy of notice of violation. It wasn't an innuendo, it wasn't any of those other things. It's a notice of violation from the state. Yes or no? No. So I didn't see the piece of paper? No. You saw a piece of paper, okay? The, the, you know, it, 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 what we are doing with the state, okay, and no, I'm asking what the state's doing with you. The state's doing with us. Did the First state off, send you a piece of paper that yeah, says a notice of violation, violation on it? It's not a notice of violation per se, okay? It's it also says that at the top. It's, it's right? also something that should not have been considered by the board. It's also something that should never have been delivered to the board. I'm just trying to get my answers to question. My, okay. my question's answered, yeah. vice versa. Right. All this says is, very simply, as you've said, clear and unambiguous. 
that the officer has to confirm, and I'm picking out the words, that you're in compliance with all existing and applicable state licenses and regulations. Okay. You've already stated that. It's here in the decision. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seen, whether we should have or not, I don't know, I'm not an attorney, a notice of violation stamped across the top, sent okay. to him, he saw it and alleged that he couldn't give you a letter because of that well, violation. Well, actually, the letter was written by Leah Rachin and sent to him for his signature. We're only, I'm only trying to talk okay. about just, item okay. B here, or okay. I, I, I don't like okay. Roman now, taking that, okay, uh, assuming that for any reason he decides not to, 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 to give us our letter, okay? The board had an option to say, you guys get out there and figure out why this thing isn't happening and you get us a letter, okay? The same thing with the map. You guys go get us a map, okay? And if they decide that that's all Milwaukee, they can turn around and deem our, our, uh, our permit, okay, granted based on our grandfather clause. That's the options, okay? And if, if, whether they like to, if, Let's say, let's say it was a, a, a notice of violation, and he says, I mean, it was something that really impacted our license. The issue is not for me to question, because I don't, right. I'm not them. You've tried to narrow this issue down to these two items exactly. in this consent agreement. So I'm trying, right. through the chair, with right. due respect, if you'll let me, trying to narrow down what we're really here to decide. Yes. And if we're going to make it as simple as these two items, it seems to me we have to determine Rather, the employee acted appropriately based on that one sentence. And if that one sentence says all state licenses and regulations have to be adhered to, and he receives something from one of those various depart very departments that says it's not, okay. I don't understand how a normal person, a normal thinking person, wouldn't come to the conclusion that they can't issue the letter. Now, if that's all we're here for, it seems to me there should be a quick hearing. No, the, 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 the issue here is they denied our permit, okay, based on the fact that they didn't get a letter, okay, and based on the fact that they didn't, didn't believe that the, uh, the, uh, uh, the map was sufficient, okay, without considering the fact that they are not permitted to deny the permit. They can force us to get you a better map, or they can force us to go out and do whatever we have to do to get that letter, but they can't deny our permit because the only options they have are A and B. Okay, that's the what that's what the provision says. There's no there's no uh, there's nothing elaborate about it. It's a very simple sentence. Anyone else have a question? Oh, if I might, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Then why is this these provisions? in the consent agreement. And why are they even existing here? What, what, why, why are they here? And you signed for them. Why? The, because we had an option here. Okay? We had options. So you had an option. Options that, that created, we created a, a, a circumstance, okay, that we could live with that did not permit the board to deny our permit. Okay? Okay. The, the board could have done you know, issues involving making us go out and get that letter or give us a better map, okay? We could fight over those issues all day long, okay? They could do whatever they want. That was the, the beginning and the end of their ability. Or they could turn around and deem the matter closed by, by, by the, uh, with the grandfather clause. There, there's an option there. There are alternatives. The sentence is an alternative. It doesn't mean, you know, you can, you can, you can, you know, grind upon one part and ignore the other. But what it really indicates is that they cannot deny our permit. Because your grandfather. Because we're grandfather or because of the fact that these other two issues, okay, are something that they can make us go back and resolve. They can't deny the permit, okay? But they can make us go out and do whatever we need to do to get the permit. I'm sorry, are you willing Saul, to do that, Saul? Are you willing to do those two provisions? Oh, are you kidding? You know, if they had said, if they had said, hey guys, we want you to get off your butts, go out there and do whatever it takes to get that letter, we would have done it. If they said, we don't like this map, we would have squabbled with them over the map, okay? The fact that they turned around and denied the permit, 
Okay. Close that avenue. Yes, Sol, we would have done it. So you had a year from the time this consent. Oh no, no, please, 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 please. Well, we didn't have a year. They you, had a year. No, no, you had a year. You no. were supposed to provide the town with a couple of items under this consent decree. And you had a year to do it. The consent decree was issued on June 27, 2016. Okay. It states states right in here that you would provide to the planning board no later than July the one. July the 1st, 2017. You had a year, and you obviously did nothing, and now you're saying, oh, we're willing to do it. And that's no, no, excuse me. Leave, excuse me. They can make us do it, okay? But they can't deny our permit. That's the issue. It isn't, it isn't an issue of whether or not, you know, you know, well, this didn't happen. You guys waited a year, and it pisses us off. Well, that's okay, okay? We didn't wait a year, okay? We, we applied it. Applied for the for the uh, the permit just exactly like we were supposed to, and it and it came out fine. The problem is, okay, as you said, if they if they wanted us to get the letter from Jim Nagel, then they had to say get the letter. If they wanted a better map, they had to say get the map. They can't turn around and say, well, because you didn't do this, we're going to turn around and deny your permit because we have an alternative. They don't have a choice beyond the two alternatives. They can deem it, deem it one way or deem it the other. And they use the word deem twice. Okay? The language is clear. Okay? You can't take one section out of that provision and ignore the other. The whole so, idea of this thing is... You're saying that you applied right away for that permit. According to the records I've seen, you applied for the permit on June the 27th, 2017, almost exactly a year after the consent decree. Okay, but before the date that we were supposed to, is that correct? Yes, it was, and in fact, it's conceded by by the, the other papers I received yeah. from from the town. We, yeah, yeah, it, but, it, but, but, but we're not delinquent if we do the answer. Along with, with the application, you were supposed to provide a readable map, right? And we thought that was a the letter map. from Jim Nagel saying that you were in. Uh, compliance with all state and, and uh, all state licenses and regulations. Okay, and when we didn't, they had the option to make us do it. No, of course they did. No, Where in the world? Not. Okay, then how do you how do you how do you explain the alternatives in that particular provision? Only you could read that into this document. I can't find it anywhere. Oh, excuse me. Let me read it to you one more time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've had it. The limited performance criteria for the issuance and reissuance of all renewal permits here and after shall be deemed to have been satisfied by the submissions described below or deemed inapplicable as a result of the boy's grandfather status. Those are the only two options the planning board had. That was it. Deem it or deem it. Who represented the town in drafting that language? She did. Yeah. I do have another sorry, question. Sorry. And the, uh, Alan, the Alan planning... Shepard was the attorney that represented us. We didn't walk in there green. I appreciate that. Okay. And the uh, attorney for the planning board has submitted us her uh, opinion that we have no jurisdiction. Are you planning to speak to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you would, an hour or later. But, uh, let me just do this, okay? I'll read it to you so I don't don't uh, have any any question. Boys livestock mostly most certainly involves administrative review and the interpretation of Rundle's land use ordinance as it was reformed and modified by the agreement and into between the town of Arundel and Du Bois livestock and its agents and associates that became an order in the consent decree. Du Bois livestock further seeks administrative review and interpretation of Arundel's land use ordinance as it applies to Du Bois Livestock's agricultural composting interpretation is especially necessary since no LUO, okay, land use ordinance, provisions are not enforceable under Maine state law. Du Bois Livestock is not seeking any interpretation of Maine state law. Du Bois Livestock is seeking the application of Maine state law, which is inherent in, in relation to the ZBA's interpretation of the effect of its statutes on the agricultural composting operation protected under 
Title VII, Main Revised Statute, Section 154. Certainly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Federer, you don't dispute that under the consent agreement you had to apply to the planning board for a conditional use permit, and you did in fact do so. Is that correct? Oh, yes, you did. Okay. Yes. So then the planning board made a decision. I, I understand you don't like that, the planning board's decision, but the planning board made a decision on their conditional use application. Is that correct? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, do you have a copy of the land use ordinance here? Because I, I have a question for you about it. I, I'm just puzzled about why uh, Du Bois Livestock has appealed to the Board of Appeals. Because the land use ordinance about conditional uses, and I'm new to representing the board, so maybe I'm missing something. But the ordinance in section 9.2.11 I'm going to find where I'm on. It's page 151. Decisions of the planning board on conditional use applications are not appealable to the Arundel Board of Appeals, but may be appealed to Superior Court. I believe that, you know, that's... Does that that's somehow not apply? No, I don't think it applies at all. In fact, we went through that. We don't believe... We believe we are compelled to apply here because we have, we have a denial based on the land use ordinance. Required to apply. But, but your yeah. application to the planning board was a conditional use application, right? Yeah. Okay. And you got a decision from the planning board on your conditional use application, right? They denied it, correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah. You have another opportunity to uh, speak before we finish. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize to you, Mr. Tansky. I, on my submissions, I had directed them to Mr. Bath, who's the chair of the planning board, and I apologize because I'm representing the planning board. I got my chairs mixed up, so I do apologize for that. Um, just as you know, a lot of the things have been addressed in questions, but let me just go through this fairly systematically because um, you know, I just want to make sure I hit all the points. The first, of course, is jurisdiction. As I had raised in my written submissions, um, one thing that I would say before we even get to the merits is the, the question of whether or not this board even has jurisdiction. As Attorney Daggett had pointed out, um, the ordinance itself sets out the proper mode of appeal. I would submit that this is not the pro proper mode of appeal. Um, secondly, the um, ordinance talks about when this board is authorized to consider um, appeals. It would be on the interpretation, it says, of this ordinance, meaning, of course, the land use ordinance. And, of course, um, as we know, much of the discussion here this evening is not at all about the, the land use ordinance. In fact, it's about a consent decree. So, um, I know your counsel will advise you on this, but it is our submission that of the Zoning Board of Appeals does not have jurisdiction to be interpreting court orders or um, what, in essence, is a contract here. All, in addition, um, there has been much discussion about Maine Agricultural Protection Act uh, excuse, and the Right to Farm, otherwise known as the Right to Farm Act. And um, the law court, never mind the merits of the arguments in that regard, but the law court has been very clear that any consideration, and I know Mr. Fetter has said that this is not about a preemption issue, but in their submissions, they're talking about how um, MAPA, or the Right to Farm Act, removes uh, the ability of the town to regulate their composting operation. And that was one of the most pressing issues in the law court decision. And I would submit that this court's, excuse me, this state's highest court has absolutely determined that MAPA does not um, take away the town's right to regulate uh, a composting operation and you know, so we'll let that rest. But so having addressed the threshold issue of jurisdiction, we're going to move on to the merits of the case if you choose to address them. And um, we would submit that. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Well, I, I think my. Um, 
Mr. Bassett is asking me at this point if you want to make a determination on the jurisdiction issue, if I should just move on to address the merits and you make your decision after the hearing, which I think is probably the best process. But I'll defer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you want to hear the, the merits, get it all in on the record, and then you can address the issues once everybody's had their, said their piece. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? I'll proceed with the arguments go, for Go along okay. with the merits. Okay. So um, we would submit, really, that this is a very simple case. You have the consent decree in front of you. It says what it says. And we would say that, interestingly, um, Mr. Fetter and I don't, don't often agree on many things. But we do, I think, agree that the language is clear and unambiguous. And basically, it sets out three things. First, that Dubois Livestock must submit their application for their conditional use of, um, renewal on or before July 1st. They checked that box. They did so. The second criteria was that they must submit an accurate plan of the site. Um, the board found that it was not accurate. It did not have any in its uh, title box who created it, the date it was created, and therefore they determined that it was not sufficient, did not meet that criteria. But really, I think where the rubber hits the road here is the third criteria where it talks about how, and I'll emphasize, do voice shall. Not the code enforcement officer, not the town, do voice in conjunction with its application permit shall submit a letter from the code enforcement officer basically confirming that they are in compliance with all governing um, rules and the conditions of their permit. Now, you have in your packet what you have already identified which the DEP clearly identified as a notice of violation. And so I understand, and I completely understand what Mr. Federer is saying, that um, perhaps that has not yet been litigated. But this consent agreement required the code enforcement officer, or I should say due voice, to obtain a letter from the code enforcement officer confirming that the composting operation is in compliance with all existing and applicable state laws. If you have the very state agency that has oversight over the composting operation issuing not just one page, not just two, a laundry list of 14 separate and distinct violations of either the conditions of their permit or the state uh, solid waste management rules, clearly the code enforcement officer is incapable of issuing a letter saying that they are in compliance with the state permit. Um, and so with those three criteria, they did not meet two out of three. The planning board had no other choice but to deny their permit. Now, we talk about choices. I know that it has been mentioned several times that there are alternatives, there are options that are built into this uh, consent agreement. So if you will indulge me a little bit, I think what we really need to do is parse the language, okay? So talking about the performance, and I'm just reading it here, the performance criteria specified in the LUO for land use ordinance, to the issuance and reissuance of all solid waste processing facility renewal permits at the site, specific to Dubois, here and after, and here we get the choice here, shall be deemed to have been satisfied, yes, it says that, but what they gloss over is this incredibly important modifier that says, by the submissions described below. So it can only be de deemed to be satisfied if they submit those submissions. They did not. And to argue that they somehow should be granted a permit without having satisfied the necessary preconditions of getting that permit, it's absurd. So the other alternative is, or deemed inapplicable as a result of Dubois' grandfather status. Now, let's fit this within the broader context. As Mr. Fetter mentioned, there was quite, they had, uh, I don't even know, 10 outstanding pieces of litigation that we went to that mediation to settle. Part of the settlement process, each side gives something, each side gets something. And what they got is exactly what's saying here, is that there were criteria under the land use ordinance. There were way more criteria that would have applied in any um, renewal per permit application. What they bargained for was to have a very, very reduced amount of 
uh, criteria that they would be judged on before they could get their permit. So instead of the laundry list that is in the, the land use ordinance that they would have been subject to, but for this settlement, they only had to meet two criteria. The, mi the map, the accurate map, and the code enforcement officer letter. That was it. That's what they bargained for, and that's what they got. And yet, they failed or refused for whatever reason, after having a year to meet those criteria, to do so. They did not. The planning board then had no other alternative but to deny their application. Um, the other main grounds, I believe, for their appeal was the submission that somehow the Maine Agriculture Protection Act does not allow the town to um, regulate them. Again, I think that is beyond this board's jurisdiction to consider. However, if you are inclined to do so, I think, again, just reading from Lockport's decision, um, while it is absolutely true that the definition of, or I should say, that subsequent revisions to MAPA that happened after this law court decision um, included expressly within its protection agricultural composting operations. But what this decision stands for is a broader concept, and I'm going to read it to you. It said, in sum, the Agricultural Protection Act does not preempt the ordinance because the legislature expressly allows local regulation. And so while it's absolutely true that the definitions have been expanded to include agricultural composting operations, the broader concept that MAPA does not preclude local re regulation still applies. And so I've spoken long enough. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have, but with that, I will say to you. I have one, but I'll defer to uh, fellow board member. <laughs> No. Well, I appreciate, if I might, I uh, appreciate that you define what the grandfathering meant. We have, we have no, like, no, no reference. Okay. I can expand yeah. on that a little bit. Okay, so just the whole concept of grandfathering. That's sort of the colloquial term for what is called in the ordinance non-conforming um, lots of record uses, non-conforming use. So what that means is, and I think it even talks about this in the law court decision, that when this operation started, I believe in the 80s, and I could be wrong there, but I think even the law court said in 1981 this operation started. And at the time, it was perfectly legal. But around 2000, so it's in the R4 zone, and at that time, composting, or I should say, let me broaden the lens here, solid waste facilities and composting under the town's ordinance, composting is included within that broader concept of solid waste processing facilities, okay? So, that was allowed in the R4 zone until around 2000, you're right there. So in 2000, the ordinance was changed to no longer allow solid waste processing facilities in the R4. But because it was a pre-existing, lawfully existing use, it is therefore grandfathered or a non-conforming use, which is allowed to continue so long as it doesn't expand and so long as it meets the requirements to get permits. And for, um, Conditional use permits, as I understand it, they expire every three years and therefore need to be renewed. Now, as I understand it, the last uh, permit that was actually obtained by Du Bois was in 2011, I believe. And so three years, math is not my forte, but that gets us to 2014. It is now 2017. Now, in Du Bois' defense, we have been litigating this conditional use permit for years and years and years. And so, um, you know, this, there was no enforcement on that because um, we were in litigation. But the whole point of this, or one of the many points of resolving this uh, case a year, you know, that we talk about the consent decree, the product of that mediation, was basically it gave them another kick at the can. Their permit had expired long ago. And this consent decree basically said, you know what? We're going to give you another try. You're going to get another year until July 1st, 2017 to get your ducks in a row and give us a proper application. They did not. Does that answer your question? It does. I'm still trying to uh, understand your interpretation of that or phrase when it was being, uh, when it got put in there. 
Okay. What did you think it meant? Well, Mr. Chair, I have to say that I wasn't even the scribe. We had just a uh, retired Judge Crowley was the one who was writing that down, okay? And it okay. was a negotiation between both parties. Let's and see. what I can, and I wish I could tell you at that very moment, crystallize what I thought that or meant. I can speak more broadly about what I thought it meant. What I thought it meant, um, and what I think everybody who was I'm there on behalf of... You're going way into that mediation. You shouldn't be doing that. You know that. I'm, I will defer but, to the chair and counsel. That's fine. I mean, to me, that uh, well, if we get to the merits, and I'm not at all sure that we will, I mean, that seems to be the whole uh, issue. What is that? Let or me, deemed inapplicable mean. Let me take a stab at that without, and hopefully I will satisfy Mr. Fetter's concerns around that. I don't think we need to get to what I thought, what, uh, you know, Selectman Danlick thought, because he was there as well, is that the language speaks for itself. The, wh what, you, you both say that. Well, let, let me back up and I will, let me get back to the language itself. So, just generally speaking, as has been pointed out, if as Du Bois contends, that they never wanted to get to the planning board, then why in the first paragraph of the agreement does it say, Du Bois shall apply to the planning board no later than July 1st? They were there, they signed their name to that agreement, they agreed, okay? So, first criteria, get in front of the planning board. And then it says, the submission criteria under the land use ordinance, which if you look for anybody who was not in involved in a settlement agreement and basically got to take a end run around the laundry list of criteria under the land use ordinance, it basically says those performance criteria in the land use ordinance shall be deemed to be satisfied if you submit the map and the code enforcement. And that basically gave them, and I'm not saying they got a free pass, they didn't because it would be absurd to say, hey, you don't need it. You don't, need a, you don't need a permit. All this says is, in order to get that permit, that if you had gone through the criteria of the land use ordinance, you'd have to do boom, 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 boom. I don't know what they are. I haven't committed them to memory. But I do know there were more than two. In this case, and this, and I will say, I know that this caused the planning board some pause. They were frustrated that basically their authority under the land use ordinance, according to this planning board, excuse me, this um, consent agreement, what, some of their authority was taken away, but that was part of the settlement process. And to settle this case, they only had to do two things under this ordinance. And it says, shall be deemed to have been satisfied by the submissions described below. You asked me about the or, or deemed inapplicable as a result of Dubois' grandfather's status. I read that second part, or deemed inapplicable as a result of the grandfather's status, means because they're grandfathered, they don't have to meet these other criteria. But they do have to meet the two that we bargained for. Thank you. Anyone else here who wants to be heard on this matter? You, you get another chance, definitely. But, uh, I just want to see if anyone else uh, wants to speak. And, you know? Yes, sir? Through. I would like to point you, out, you, you my name is Richard Benong, I serve on the planning board, I live here in Arundel, and I would like to point out that at the July 27th meeting that we had, none of the Dubois showed up. There was nobody here. We asked, they talk about, well, we could have told them what the map meant. There was nobody here to tell. Thank you. To the, the, the the for the parties. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That's okay. Uh, Chip Bassett, I'm uh, chairman of the planning board. Uh, the, the, as we interpreted the consent decree, we had no choice. The land use ordinance was rendered irrelevant by the consent decree. We needed three things an application by before July 1st of 2017. An application was submitted. We needed a, an adequate site plan, which is something that can be corrected over time, possibly. Um, but the consent decree also said that the letter 
from the code enforcement officer stating that there were no violations had to be delivered by a date certain, by July 1st, 2017, so that when we voted on July 27th, that date had passed. So there was no way, short of a time machine, to correct the inability of Du Bois Livestock to deliver that letter by July 1st. Uh, they, they were unable to do so. We were in possession of notice of violations with, with 14 specific points from the main Department of Environmental Protection. I believe the letter is dated June 26th, 2017, and made the date. Um, but that was the, the, the most fundamental fact in our decision making was that one of the criteria, the production of a letter from the code enforcement officer as a proxy for state and federal regulators had to be received by July 1st. That date had passed and it was impossible to satisfy that criteria or to correct it because the date had passed. Mr. Chen, may I ask a, a, a question, Mr. Bassett? Please. Thanks. Um, is it your understanding that the grandfathered status, which is referred to in the consent decree, covers the existence of the uh, facility as a facility, solid waste processing facility, the composting facility, uh, which under current land use ordinance would not be permitted? It is permitted because it's grandfathered in. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I found the question. Perhaps can I, if I might, I just think, um, and I'm not trying to cut off the chair at all, but I think it's really important to understand that this, the decision being appealed from was the decision of the planning board collectively. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's rather dangerous to start going in to ask questions about an issue that really wasn't even part of the decision. And whether or not something's a legally non-conforming grandfather abuse, is a legal question that really wasn't part of the decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's something that you feel is really important to answer, you know, we can do that. But I am a little reluctant to have one person speak for the entire board because I think different people may have different conclusions in that regard, and that was not part of the findings or the decision. That's fair enough. Okay. All right, all right. So, that's fair. Anyone else? Oh, thank you. Your uh, turn. I just want to address the first off, I can't say it enough. This is not an issue of preemption when it comes to the, the town ordinances. Okay, uh, the May uh, Agricultural Protection Act, okay, when it amended its, its particular section, it, it, it has been law for years. It, what it said was you can make all the, the uh, ordinance that you want, but when it comes to an agricultural you know, uh, composting facility, okay, you cannot apply them. Now, now, let me just read you what, exactly what, it, what uh, Section 154 says. A farm operation or agricultural composting operation located in an area where agricultural activities are permitted, which it is, may not be considered a violation of a municipal ordinance if the farm operation or agric agricultural composting operation conforms to best management practices as determined by the commission or accordance with section 153. What that means is, okay, it, it's not preempting anything. We aren't saying we're, that that uh, that map up preempts anything. It just renders that particular uh, ordinance that we're talking about unenforceable against the composting area. Okay, it's not preemption. Additionally, okay, I cannot stress. Okay. The, the importance of the alternatives in that particular section. I, I realize that you know, you know, everyone wants to make so much more out of one section than they do the other section. Okay. It says, yeah, we couldn't satisfy it. But we didn't have to satisfy it. It was going to be deemed satisfied or deemed inapplicable. Okay. And that was our option. We chose that option. We bargained for that option. 
Okay, we knew what that option meant when we walked out the door. Okay, we, we can't turn around and massage it and, and create more, okay, uh, of, of a present for one particular part of that uh, of that provision than the other. Okay, it, or is everything. It doesn't say say and you must do this. It says or you can do that. Okay, I understand that, you know. You know, there's a there, there's a there's a there's an, there's an issue with the with the board as to whether or not you know we could be compelled to go get a uh, uh, a letter from from the CEO. Okay, that that may be very true. We also may be compelled to get a better map. Okay, and the fact that we waited till the last day before or the week before the the, the time period ran to, to file our our uh, our. Uh, our our application was well within our rights. Okay. That's that's the whole. At the time we filed it, okay, there was no hint that the uh, that the uh, Department of Environmental Protection was going to pull the stunt that they did in relation to sending out a, a, a notice of violation. Okay. It came as much of a surprise to us as anybody else, but it still did not change the fact that, okay, we were, okay, you know, under right. To either satisfy or have you know deemed inapplicable. You, you can't reduce the word deemed inapplicable because it doesn't use the word satisfy. And we weren't out there begging for some some opportunity to come in and file a permit. Okay. We know that that under the circumstances with that statute, okay, and and we are certainly going to be going through over this again on the tenth, and we're going to bring in a particular attorney. Okay, that was instrumental in creating you know, okay, that statute at the legislature who represented us okay, because of the fact that it undermined an entire okay, system of agriculture. Composting has been agriculture forever. But the fact that the, the, the Supreme Court made the determination that because it wasn't in, it was in one section, not in another, that it was intentionally left out, okay, Sent the sent the you know department of agriculture into a spiral. They just went in, they grabbed us, they grabbed everybody, we went down there, and we got the we got the law changed so it included us. And at that time, we were you know we were it was a year later that we went in, we made this deal, okay, that with the intent, okay, not to let ourselves be placed in a position where our permit could be denied. There's no question that, that they could they could make us get a uh, a letter from the, uh, the Jim Nagel. Okay, no matter what hoops we had to go through, they we had to do that. If they didn't like our map, we could argue and fight with them over that and get them the right kind of map that they want. But that was their decision. Okay, there was no July 1st. You had to have it by then. Okay, it's not a part of the, the, the provisions. And if it had been, and and it was something that was was not satisfied, then the board would have been forced to go to the alternative, which was to uh, deem the, the, uh, the LUO inapplicable. We're not trying to, to, you know, to make something up that isn't there. Okay. We wanted that, we bargained for it, and that's where we were at with that. Okay. I have a question. Sure. It's a jurisdiction issue again, I don't know if we get to the merits, but if we do, can you briefly persuade me how it is that you're conforming to best management practices? Oh, you know, best management practices, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a whole system. We have a, what they call a nutrient management plan, okay? We, we make sure that we get one every, you have to get one every five years, and based on the nutrient management plan, if you follow both the criteria in that particular plan, which we always do, okay, then we meet the, meet the standards for best management practices. If there if there's a uh, if there's any issue involving uh, like best management practices, the the, uh, the procedure for the Department of Agriculture is that if someone complains and, and because they think we're we're not in compliance, the uh, the uh, the agent in the area, okay, first off he, he he gets a hold, he either calls us or he sends us a letter, okay, identifying who's complained, what they complained about, and, and what it is that we need to be fixed. And we are required to go meet that individual, find out what the problem is, and then we can go back and fix it. If, if it's not fixed, then it goes through with two or three more steps, okay, in, in that, are, that are involved, okay, to show that the, the, the best management practices aren't being, being applied. 
We have a license from the DEP which set out our best management practices. Okay, all the time they're reviewing and considering okay, the, the, the issues on, on the composting uh, operation to determine whether or not okay, there's something more we could possibly do or you know, it just goes on and on. But we are in full conformance with best management practices. So that maybe I'm not getting something, but it sounds like everybody's in conformance with best management practices then. If you have a best man if you have a nutrient management plan and you're following it, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, and so and who who developed the plan? You have to get it from the NRCS, which is the federal government. Okay. It's a federal yeah, plan. Yeah. So you know, it costs about ten thousand dollars to get one worked up. So I mean, they're not cheap, and we do it every five years. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have questions? Your opportunity for I'm going to try to make it very, very quick. Okay, I think it's really important to get back to this either or, the alternative, the choice. Again, context is very, very important. Let's remember that the whole point of this is that under the ordinance for conditional use, uses, permits, renewals, they have to show that they meet several different criteria, okay? This agreement basically allows them to not meet those criteria. That's what the either or is, is that they will, these, these criteria under the ordinance will be deemed to have been satisfied by the submissions described below, okay? So they're either deemed satisfied by those submissions or they're deemed inapplicable because of the grandfathered use. So what this is saying is that all of those criteria under the land use ordinance that a regular applicant would have to meet, they don't have to do that. They only have to meet these two criteria. That is what this means. Otherwise, why would we even have said they have to go to the planning board? If it was just a rubber stamp. It, it is absolutely true that this settlement agreement or consent decree, whatever we want to call it, did divest the planning board of certain authority all of that laundry list, the usual laundry list, to review that laundry list. But this basically says that if you give us these two things, these two minor things that we're asking for, then these criteria will deem to have been satisfied because of their grandfather status. That's what that means. At least that is what this clear language, it's not what I think it means, it's not what Tom Dana think it, I think it is what we think it means, but the bottom line is it says it right there. Um, and with respect to MAPA, again, I'm not going to believe this point because this board just does not have jurisdiction to hear it. But I think um, you know, your council will, will talk to you about that. But as I said, I think the holding in this case is broad enough to um, basically address the same argument that Mr. Fetter is making here. So, so. Thank you. Ready to deliberate and make a decision. If that's the case, then you want to close the public hearing part and so that nobody from the audience can talk anymore. So if you have any questions, do I get them answered now? A decision on what? I think we're going to do jurisdiction Very good. for us. Yeah. Okay, I guess once you close the yeah. public hearing, you start to deliberate. That means you're, 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 you know. Uh, ask ask questions, questions of the audience unless you reopen the public hearing and you have to, if you ask a question of one side, you're going to have to allow the other side to respond. So I'm just reminding board members Thank that you. you get your questions answered now because um, the next step is to close the public hearing and take the deliberations. Everybody clear on that? Do we need a motion to close the public hearing? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah. To Move we close the uh, public hearing. I don't think it's necessary, but second. All in favor? All right, the public hearing is cool. With regard to deliberations, and we definitely need to uh, approach jurisdiction, and there are two separate matters to decide. 
second one was uh, regarding the, uh, the court saying that it was about the composting. I guess there's, in my view, an issue about whether the, the Board of Appeals is the appropriate venue to hear an appeal of a conditional use application. That's the jurisdictional issue. Depending on that's heard. We're we'll decided there, then we'll go into the deliberating on the merits of the case that we heard, but we have to go through the first bridge first. Yeah. Right. I think 9211 appeals. I think mean, answers that question pretty clearly. It's, I'm not a lawyer, but that's about as clear a piece of language as I ever saw. Decisions of the planning board and conditional use applications, which is what this is, are not appealable to the Board of Appeals. I think we don't have the right to. Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? I would agree with you. It, it, am I correct? Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the yeah. term. I, I, that's why I asked the question. I yeah. didn't know if I was missing something, but it, in my view, that is the heart of the matter here. Mm -hmm. The. Livestock has appealed the Board of Appeals, but I think they should have gone to Superior Court. It's under Section 9.2.11. Any further discussion? Do we need a motion to the effect that we, it's outside our um, board? Uh, well, I think we need to vote board, on that. I think a motion can be made that the board lacks subject matter jurisdiction based on section 9.2.11 of the land use ordinance. I I say so moved. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll second. second. Any further discussion on that? We do not have the jurisdiction. Aye. Uh, no. Unanimous. Do, do we need to address the merits? Uh, if you don't have jurisdiction, I don't think you need to get into the merits. Okay. Someday I need to be educated why we listen to the whole thing instead of just the jurisdiction up front. Yeah, I'm starting to so the We're making a record, I get that. So we need to make the record. This is some stuff that came out. The applicant started, and I think it was only fair that both sides got heard of the issue. Okay. We, we didn't know if what the board was going to do on May 6th. It was an experience of reason, and it was a possibility that we didn't want to uh, address the merits, even if somehow we said we don't have jurisdiction and some higher authority. Take it back and said yes, you do. Well, you don't have so, to, and I'm I mean, I, I, mean, I appreciate that, that uh, it could have been 10 minutes instead of uh, an hour and 10 minutes, but, or five. That was my point. What's next in the agenda? So, just uh, so everybody's clear, uh, you need to do a written decision within um, seven okay. days of. We have seven, our, seven days. We have day our, one starts tomorrow. We have so a meeting next week, I believe, to uh, cover that. Right. Same Sally, are you recommending that we don't 
uh, vote on the merits of this case, or are you just saying? You've got some, an it's, you know, it's one of these. Um, in some instances, when the board um, doesn't have jurisdiction, they'll still it's been a long you know, process and multiple meetings, and uh, there's a real risk that the court may send it back anyway. Um, sometimes boards will do that as sort of an alternative, but I'm not recommending. I mean, it's up to you if you want to charge forward and uh, act on the merits. That's up to you. Um, but I'm not recommending you do it here, but frankly, I think this ordinance provision is very straightforward, and I, unless, you know, the six of us are really missing something, I'm not sure that a court is going to make you come back and deal with the merits, but I guess if they do, it, you know, you can deal with it at that time. It usually happens if we miss something, this is kind of hard to miss. Well, I think it's kind of academic. It's if we don't have jurisdiction, then why would we have a discussion about that? Well, sometimes the jurisdictional issue could be tricky itself, and that's what I'm saying. Here, this yeah. seems to me uh, is pretty straightforward. Do you have some minutes for us to approve? Yep, um, yeah. that should be right with your packet. I've left on the table tonight. Oh, it is. Thank you. Very short. We do now next week. Can we be clear about what documents belong with next week's appeal and what they're actually appealing next week? Okay. We haven't approved the these. We haven't coming. approved these minutes yet. Okay. Sorry. Could we do that first? Sure. Then by all means, talk about our other business. We need to read them out loud. No. Okay. Okay. We approve the minutes. I move, I move that we approve the minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Any discussion? Are there any changes or edits that needs to be made? As presented, I assume that you may. Yes, as presented. Yes. Yes. Was it really 855? Yeah, by the time we adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> No further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they're approved. Now, sorry, Dave, for that. Any no new, problem. Any it's new because, business? Um, it's not necessarily new business because we already have it scheduled for the next meeting. But I just would like to have it be clear to us what documents will be used for next week's, or what submissions have been made, and what their actual, what we're dealing with next week. And yeah. we can deal with that between now and then, but. Um, I believe it was last week I sent out a packet to all of you. Um, that is what you're going to have for next week's meeting. Plus I have some exhibits to hand out to you as well. So bring that packet with you only. You don't have to bring anything from tonight. Okay, so you have more to come tonight. I do. Thank you. Uh, is, that, is that considered other business? Yeah. And when you, just to clarify, is everything that you're handing out to the board members tonight, is that been supplied to both the planning board representative and the voice? I'm doing that. I gave the boys theirs when they left, and I'm going to hand out planning boards tonight. Yeah. Any other business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Um, no, I just got that one last night from the Yes. Okay. That way you don't have to use the stuff. Okay.